I would also like to acknowledge the Duraid and Gurigai people, the traditional custodians of this land, and to pay respects to their elders past and present, and extend that respect to any other Aboriginal people. Thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you to the Civic Trust for organising this. Um, thank you for coming in on such a dark and stormy night. I think we're all better off in here than we are out there. Uh, as uh, was mentioned earlier by Andrew, the nominations for the polls don't close until noon tomorrow. So at the end of tonight, if you think that all of us are hopeless, you've still got a few hours to get your nomination in. Now I've uh, lived with my wife in Hornsby for 16 years. Uh, we brought up our two daughters there, and they've both grown into strong, independent women that we're very proud of. When I'm not trying to get elected, uh, I spend time in the bush, I like a little sailing on the Hawkesbury, and uh, when the neighbours are out, I like to practice my electric guitar. <laughs> I'm an emeritus professor of physics, which basically means I'm retired, though I retain the status of professor. I train in physics and chemistry, and have spent most of my career, some 40 years, doing astrophysics. This has taken me to Antarctica, where I've led 12 research expeditions, uh, most recently to the 4,000 meter high summit of the Antarctic Plateau. I've also run an electronics business, and for many years I was a director of Solar Mobility, a formerly based company that made mobility scooters for disabled people. So, I hope I've reassured you that I've got some real world experience, and I'm not just some kind of a weird academic egghead. I've actually been apolitical for most of my life. In 1978, the US Academy of Science released a report showing that climate change was a real and present danger. As a scientist, I just assumed that governments would act promptly and decisively. Well, some did, and some didn't. In Australia, over 35 years later, neither Labor nor Liberal are taking climate change seriously. The Abbott government is in complete denial. What I realized then was that to solve this problem, we don't need more scientists rabbiting on about climate change. We need scientifically literate politicians. That's why I took up politics. Now for two decades, New South Wales has suffered from corruption because of background, backroom deals, a culture of entitlement, and a tradition of public assets being sold or even simply given to vested interests. Some of the corruption has been explicit, and ICAC have had quite a lot to say about that. <clears throat> but there's also a rather more subtle taint of a revolving door between government officials and industries that they're meant to regulate. And I think it's time for some clean politics. And I'd ask you just to imagine what New South Wales would be like if over the last 20 years we hadn't had corrupt governments. Governments that instead governed in the interest of the people rather than as a payback to lobbyists and corporate burdens. So I'll very quickly run through just a few of the, the bullet points. So if we can have the next slide. Planning for the community. We all want to live in affordable housing in livable communities. The beautiful historic part of Hornsby, Hornsby West Side, is about to have 25-storey buildings built over the top of it. National parks, such as our own Karingai National Park and Barara Valley Park, are under threat. And I remind you that national parks are a state responsibility, despite the name. National parks are there, first and foremost, so that future generations can enjoy what we enjoy. They're not for building sports fields on. They're not for shooting in. They're not vacant land that the government of the day can simply excise and use for its own purposes. <coughs> the economy. <coughs> the economy has become the new god, and it shouldn't be. The economy, like government, is there to serve the people not vice versa. 
We need a strong economy, and we need it for one reason only, and that is so we can make a better society. If we damage the society or the environment for the sake of the economy, then we achieve nothing. We can build a strong economy through the four E's, education, environment, and equality. Education, so that everyone can be the best they can be. Environment, because if we don't protect the environment, it will come back and bite us. And equality, because the fastest way to a more prosperous society is to remove the barriers to participation and to reduce inequality. Education. Free public education, accessible to all, is the key to a prosperous, harmonious society. Education is something that starts at birth and hopefully continues until you shuffle off this mortal coil. <coughs> Winding back TAFE funding, privatizing the vocational education and training sector is not a good thing. Transport. We all agree that Angels <coughs> Road is a mess. But after the tunnel opens in 2019, after there have been 50 trucks a minute going in and out of Hornsby Quarry, when it opens in 2019, Pennant Hills Road will be more clogged than it is now. Two years after that, the M1 will be at a standstill. These are not my numbers, this is from the Traffic Authority's own modelling. So the tunnel is not a solution, it's a band-aid. We need to take a deep breath and find out how do we solve transport. And there's a lot of ways of doing it, a lot of components of which public transport, of course, is front and centre. Clean energy. Tony <coughs> Abbott's Liberal government have completely dropped the ball on this, and so now it's up to the states to take charge. New South Wales has some of the best solar resources in the world. We can create a 100% renewable New South Wales. We don't need coal. It's a horrible health hazard. It is not good for humanity, despite what Tony Abbott says. So on March 28th, we've got a choice, and the choice is about the future. We can't do anything about the corrupt governments of the past. That's ICAC's job, and I believe that's still got a lot of work to do. But we can do something about the future. We can vote for a government which is clean, accountable, and represents that interest. Greens in the lower house, and the last slide, most importantly, Greens in the upper house. Thank you.